We've implemented has next. We implemented next. So now there's three more methods for us to focus on today. Um, add, remove, and set. Um, each of these, we're going to focus on these methods one at a time, starting with add. Each method has a few special cases we have to consider. So we're going to kind of write each of these methods in like little chunks based on the diagrams, because I think it helps to see it visually before we try to turn it into code. So, first case. Let's say um, our iterator, as we see here, um, is at the beginning of a list. We know that because position is null. We have various nodes in our linked list. With the iterator at the very beginning of the list, we call add. That's perfectly allowed. That's going to add the new node at the beginning of the list. And so when we do that, here's our new node. So our new node is going to have the data, um, the element's going to be Juliet. And we need to insert it at the beginning of this linked list. There are several things that need to change about the linked list object um, and the new node um, and our iterator to reflect that. When all is said and done, and you can definitely tell I drew this by hand, this is what things are going to look like. Okay? Our linked list, the first node in our linked list is no longer Diana. It now refers to Juliet. Juliet's node here, its next will refer to Diana, which was the first node in the list. In addition, our list iterator position needs to refer to the new node because the iterator needs to refer to the thing that we just iterated over or that like for example we just added. Okay. So we need to update first, we need to update position, and we need to link the new node to what was the first node in the list. That's a lot of stuff, but here's the good news. If I scroll up here, it's since it's been a little a day, we wrote a method called add first, which does almost all of that work for us. Okay? So we don't need to duplicate this code. We can actually call the add first method instead. So let's write, let's handle this first case of add. All right, so we got public void add. The element is a type object. We're not doing the generic stuff here. Here's our first special case. If position equals null, meaning the iterator is at the beginning of the list, we get to leverage the code we already wrote so we can simply call add first and pass along the element. That takes care of making the new node. That takes care of linking the new nodes next to what is the was the first node in the list. That takes care of updating the linked list such that this new node is the first node. This does everything but update the iterator. So the only line of code we need here is to say position equals first. We want our iterator to refer to this new node that we just made the first node in the list. Because if we call add again, switching to the diagram, if we call add again right away, the other node will be between Juliet and Diana. So that's why the iterator needs to refer to Juliet. All right, that's our special case. Else. Otherwise, we're not so lucky. We're going to have to do a little bit more work on our own. Let's look at a more generic case. In this case, our list iterator refers to this node whose data is Harry, meaning we just iterated over Harry, over that element. Okay? Conceptually, we think of the iterator as between Harry and Romeo. If we call add at this point, and we're going to add a new node whose value is Juliet, um, there are a few things we need to do to update these links um, and our iterator. 
And the order in which we do them, much like the code we wrote previously, really matters. So here's what it looks like before. Here's what it looks like after. And we need to do these operations in this order. Okay, so we're going to talk through all four of them, and then we're going to do like one at a time in the code. Here's our new node, so we do need to make a new node. The new nodes next needs to link to Romeo. How do we find Romeo? Well, it is the node linked from next from our current position in the iterator. So we can say position dot next is the link to Romeo. So we can update new node dot next to equal position dot next. So let's do that first. We're gonna do this like one line of code at a time. Well, a couple lines of code here first, because we actually have to make oops, a new node. So node new node equals new node. Let's save the data so we don't forget. That would be unfortunate. So the new node's data is assigned to the element, which references whatever object the user is adding. And then here's where we fix up the link. So new node.next equals position.next. New node.next equals position.next. Again, let's connect that to the diagram. Position, right here, dot position gets us to here, dot next gets us to here. The reference to this node is what we're storing here in new node dot next. There we go. That's link number one is shown in the diagram. Link number two, Julie, this node for Juliet is being inserted between Harry and Romeo. We took care of one of the links. We now need to fix up the other link we need to update this node to refer to the new node. The node we need to update is the one currently referenced by position. So now we want to say position.next equals new node. So let's write that line of code. It looks like that. And this is why the order is so critical, right? Like, if we were to do this line of code first, we would have blasted over the val very value of position.next that we needed to use to actually update new node.next, right? So the, the order is, is key here. We're almost there. Going back to the diagram, that's step two. Step three is to update our iterator. Our iterator position needs to refer to this new node. So we can just say position equals new node. That part isn't so bad. And then the final step we need to do regardless. Whether we added the node to the beginning of the linked list or somewhere in the middle of the linked list or at the end of the linked list, whatever it happens to be, we need to set is after next to false. Okay. The is after next instance variable, it's only set to true immediately after we call the next method. When we call any other method, like add, remove, set, we do it for set two, I think we're supposed to. Again, not sure about set. Certainly add and remove, we have to set it back to false. Um, so that we can detect if we have the right state to perform these operations. That's what add looks like. Yeah, questions about add. What's that? Oh, I'm so glad you asked about that. I totally forgot to mention that. What about previous? Um, great question. We didn't do anything with previous, right? We just totally ignored it. The reason being, we don't really care. It doesn't matter because we only use previous so that we can remove nodes. And we can only remove nodes if we just call next. So we only really care that previous is updated when we call the next method, and then we use it in the remove method. If we're in any other method, we just kind of ignore it because it doesn't matter. 
That's a really good question. I totally forgot to mention that. Other questions about that? Let's try to remove a node. That's the next method here. We've got a comment for already. So this will be public. Oops, public void remove. Here we need to actually check is it okay to actually remove a node? Meaning is position is previous valid meaning did we just call next so we have to check that first if it's not after next that's a problem and so we're going to behave exactly the way that the linked list iterator in the java standard library behaves we're going to throw a new illegal state exception So the illegal state exception is used when the state your object is in is not compatible with what you're trying to do. You're trying to remove a node, but you haven't called next. So like you can't do that. You're not following the rules. Or you're not in the right state to remove a node. So we throw an exception. Assuming next has been called, let's look at a couple different cases. Let's say that our iterator um, is referring to the first node in the list, meaning our iterator was at the beginning of the list, then we called next, and so now our iterator is referring to the first node in the list. We just iterated over Diana. Um, now we call remove. This is what it has to look like. Diana goes away, and first in the linked list object needs to refer to what was the second element in the list. In addition, we have to update position to be null because now our iterator is at the beginning of the list. We just deleted the element we had iterated over. So a couple things to change here. The code to do this part, we already wrote in remove first. So we don't need to duplicate that. We can just call remove first for this kind of boundary case. So let's do that. Let's check for the boundary case. If position equals first, so if the iterator is referencing the first node in the linked list, call remove first. That takes care of almost everything, except the iterator itself. We need to set position to null to show that the iterator is now at the beginning of the list. So that handles our, our special case. Here's the generic case. So in this case, the iterator has just iterated over Harry, so it's referring to Harry. Um, if we now call remove, Harry's going to disappear, and we have a few things to clean to clean up. It's not too bad. Um, the node before Harry needs to link to the node after Harry. Um, here is where previous is super useful. Position refers to the node whose data is Harry. Previous refers to the node that's before that. This is why we keep track of previous, solely so we can implement remove, because we need to write code that says something like previous gets us to here, dot next, this value here, now equals um, position, that's how we got to Harry, dot next to get to this node. So this, creating this first link here is what the very reason why we keep track of previous. So let's write that line and look at the picture one more time. So previous.next equals position.next. 
it looks so simple, um, but there's a lot. I don't know. I still think that's a complicated to keep track of all these references. So previous.next equals position.next. Again, looking at the picture, previous.next gets us this value equals position.next gets us this value. We're linking Diana's node to Romeo's node right here. We also need to use previous because we have to update position. Position cannot continue to refer to the node for Harry because it's gone. Position needs to refer to um, the node for Diana, the one that's before it. So we can simply say position equals previous. And then regardless of what whether it was the boundary case or not, is after next gets set back to false. And I think now that we've coded this, it's a little bit easier to appreciate some of the restrictions of iterators when it comes to next and remove. Because at this point, once we've updated stuff here, oops, sorry, once we've updated stuff here, previous still is referring to the node for Diana as well. We can't update previous to whatever comes before Diana unless we had like a previous previous, right? Well, and then what if we called remove twice? We need a previous previous previous. So it's, it's just not going to work. Um, and so that's why we have this restriction that we can only call remove once and we can only call it after we invoke next because the links have the position and the previous both have to be accurate. So it's not just like the linked list class was being mean to us in chapter 15. There's a good reason why it works this way. It's due to a limitation of the, the state that we can hold on to. If this was a doubly linked list, we'd have more flexibility. We'd have more options. We could do a lot of different stuff. But in the simple case, we're somewhat restricted. So. While we're, I guess, on the topic of appreciating stuff in chapter 15, I also help think that this helps us better understand the concurrent modification exceptions. And what I mean by that is I think you can imagine like if this is the current state of the linked list in the iterator and all of a sudden not using the iterator but using the linked list directly, someone were to insert a node between Diana and Harry, previous would no longer be valid and we wouldn't have a way to fix it. And that's why we get to the state where we just can't reliably do anything and so the concurrent modification exception gets someone changed the list, we can't fix the iterator, so we're not going to do anything more, we're just going to throw the exception. Okay. That's why those things come along. Or if someone were to like delete the node for Harry, not using the iterator, the iterator now refers to a node that's not even in the list. We can't deal with that, right? We got a further concurrent modification exception. But before we could, and we don't know what the previous previous node is, so we haven't done that. So we could, like, there could be a node before Diana, but we don't know what it's not. There's no way we can do it. So that's why we're stuck with just giving up on previous and basically saying we only get previous once, we each call the new That's where that's the same restriction we saw in chapter 15, is now we're like, kind of like living. Oh, like in our case here? Great question. Um, no, we would have to do extra work to detect and generate that. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure how that's implemented in the Java standard library. If I, off the top of my head, I could see adding an additional instance variable to linked list here. Um, 
which basically is like some sort of a Boolean flag that gets changed when the linked list makes the change. And the iterator could check that. And if it went from like false to true, it'd be like, oh, that's bad. Throw the exception, right? Probably something similar to that. Maybe not, probably not exactly, but we would have to write that code. Yeah. Um, okay. could we, like, so we could basically get rid of this after next and just use previously null? So the question then is, previous ever null actually be called next? Because if so, it won't work, right? Let's see. I don't know the answer to that. Let's look at our pictures. Ah, here's an answer to that. So in this case, we were at the beginning of the list, we just called next. So position refers to the nodes that are in it. It would be valid at this point in time to call the new. To get rid of Diana. But unfortunately this is not. So I think we need that extra instance of the I think. Let's let's do our last method. This isn't bad. Last method. Public void set. I think of the set method kind of as a replace. Replace the data for this node with this other data. Um, that's really all we're we're doing. Um, I believe we need to check the is after next here actually as well to mirror the behavior from the Java standard library class. So let's actually check that. If not, is after next. So we are only supposed to call set if we've already called, we just called next. Um, if we haven't, let's throw that illegal state exception again. So that checks for the invalid state. Um, I didn't make a new diagram for this. We could just like, here, let's just look at this one. If our iterator is refer whatever node our iterator is referring to with position, when we call set, we're simply going to replace the value of data with the value specified by the user. That's it. That's all that set does. So we can just say position.data equals element. That's it. Yeah. Ooh, good question. Do we need to set is after next to false? I have to double check the Java doc. I think we can call set multiple times. We'll have to double check to be sure, but I think that's the behavior. So we're trying to model the behavior of the linked list in the standard library. Yeah, that would work fine, right? Because all our links are still fine. We're not changing any links, right? So I think, I think this, I'm sure it's okay for the way we wrote the class. I think it's also consistent with the behavior of the standard class, although we should verify. 